have, you know, really, really uh, happy to be able uh, to make a difference. You know, there are different things, um, you know, that, that happen. Some of them get more attention than others. You know, I would say not being able to visit um, has not gotten the attention it deserves. I mean, I think there was a effort. I think the, the, the media was very pro-lockdown. Um, that was viewed as something that was the right thing to do. Obviously, you know, it wasn't. And so, um, but these stories are so powerful. And when people are separated, when they're not allowed to have the loved ones there, you know, that has really incalculable damage. And, um, you know, the fact that, you know, we listen to Doug, I mean, you, know, you, you hate to be in that situation, but if you have to have that, and we all eventually have to have that, don't you want to be able to have your family there um, and your loved ones there? So in Florida, uh, you have that right in law. And I think what Dr. Latipo said is, is, is correct, that um, yes, our hospitals by and large have been working well with this. This is something we started talking about a lot. Really, one of the, I was probably the first governor you know, to, to say, guys, you need to be letting, these, letting our folks in to see their loved ones. And, and it's not just end of life. I mean, just you have a teenage kid that breaks a leg. They need to have their parents in there with them. Like, yeah, that's not going to be a fatal thing, but that's important. It's a, it's a traumatizing thing to be hospitalized or to have some stuff like that. So we're, we're proud of doing that. But we also recognize that, you know, we, we were all sitting here three years ago. And I had told you that there would be governors in this country that would lock little kids out of school for a year, shut churches down. You know, there were states in this country that lock, shut churches down, but yet they have liquor stores and strip clubs open. Who would have thought that would ever have been acceptable in the United States? And so I think we've seen that you know, if you're not vigilant about some of these things and you have the wrong leaders in place, um, you, know, you can have some really bad decisions. And so... You know, hopefully uh, there would be no retreating on this in the foreseeable future. But if there is another crisis, I think it's important that we not lose sight over things that really matter. Um, don't let people whip up fear so much that you're depriving people of basic human dignity. And I think that this bill today uh, really creates, um, you know, cement around those those rights. And so as different things and, and the currents of, of life and different issues that come up, as those go back and forth, um, these rights to be with your loved ones are fundamental, um, and they're not going to be able to be ignored. And so, so that's a good day for the state of Florida. And again, we're leading on this where, where other states, um, you know, have not been willing to do so. And, and, and why not? I mean, we've been leading on a lot of other stuff that we're very proud of. You know, we have right now we have the largest budget surplus in the history of this state by a country mile, uh, not even close. If you look at the state that's closest to us in population is New York State. They have three million fewer people than we do. Uh, they have, the budget is over twice the size there, taxes through the roof, and yet we have better roads, better infrastructure, higher performing K-12 schools, and our public university systems rank number one in the nation five years in a row by U.S. News and World Report. And we do all of that with no income tax and the lowest per capita tax burden in the United States. So that's what you call leaders. <laughs> when you look at what a lot of these other cities were doing, how horribly they were treating the police over the last couple of years. You know, they were cutting funding for police. They weren't supporting the police. And you saw crime skyrocket in places like Seattle and Chicago and Minneapolis and New York. And what did we do in Florida? We never stopped supporting people in law enforcement. While other areas were defunding or cutting funding, last year we did a $1,000 bonus for every single firefighter and police officer in the state of Florida. And then... We thought it was good, so we got the legislature to put it in the budget again for this year. So two years in a row, every single person that wears the uniform is going to get a $1,000 bonus check from us. <laughs> and you notice we don't allow what they do in, like, New York where they don't have any cash bail. So they put the criminals right back on the street. So someone will get arrested for a sexual assault. They'll put them right back on the street. And then they end up committing other crimes instead of being put, uh, uh, put behind bars. And so, you know, in Florida, we don't believe in that. We believe in holding people accountable uh, when they violate the law. Um, and we're not going to let the criminals uh, take
take the upper hand over the victims of crime. And you also saw what we did last year. We signed a bill, as all these other places were defunding law enforcement, we signed a bill saying that in Florida, we're not going to let any local government defund law enforcement. If they try to do it, we will put the money back in so that people are safe. And I think having those messages, that's part of the reasons why so many of these police officers want to move to Florida. And oh, by the way, on Friday, I signed a bill that's even going to open the floodgates more. We said that a lot of people have not, it used to be very hard to get a job in law enforcement. People wanted it. Now they're treated very poorly by the media and by others that it's harder to recruit. We have a better job in Florida because we have a very uh, law and order culture, but uh, there's vacancies. And so you have people that are being treated horribly in Seattle, Minneapolis, New York, all these places. And so what we said is anyone who's new to law enforcement in Florida, either one of our young people that decide to go in as their first profession or transferring in from these other cities and states, if you do that and take a position in Florida, we now in law have $5,000 signing bonuses for all of those folks who come and fill these positions in Florida. So that's going to make a huge difference. I'm very concerned about uh, what Biden has done at the southern border. Um, you know, since he's been president, they've had two million come in illegally across the southern border. Uh, I had helped send some people to help from Texas, to help Texas last summer, and I went down there and visited. They're coming from all over the world. Uh, we saw Libyans, we saw Haitians, we saw people from the Middle East, South America, you name it, they were coming. And what's happened is you've seen the biggest increase in human trafficking, sex trafficking, and drug trafficking than we've ever seen um, in the modern history of our country. The number one cause of death, like one of the, the main things they're bringing across the border is fentanyl. The number one cause of death between people 18 and 45 in the United States of America is fentanyl overdose. Wow. And so when you have that flow coming in, that has a direct impact on communities all across this country with the fentanyl. And, um, you know, I think, it's, I think it's been a disaster. But what they're now doing is they're going to get rid of what they call Title 42. So the one that they, the people that they were stopping, now even they're going to be able to come. And so I think those numbers are going to increase starting at the end of May. So, so that's not good policy for this country. And so what we're doing in Florida is saying, you know, we're not going to let the recklessness of those policies um, impact our state. So we do not if businesses or if contractors are dumping people who are illegal into Florida from southern Texas, you know, we're going to go after their ability to do business in Florida. If Biden is dumping people, which he has dumped people, they fly him in at 2 in the morning. They haven't done it lately, but they did it many months ago. Um, you know, we now have money where we can reroute them to sanctuary states like Delaware, and we're going to do that <laughs> to make sure that we're keeping people safe here. Also very um, happy with what we're doing with education. We have um, uh, now, since I've become governor, Florida is now ranked number three in the latest Education Week rankings for K-12 achievement. And that used to not be the case when I was growing up in Florida. And so part of what we've done is, you know, we have the most robust school choice in the country. Parents, low-income parents have opportunities to go. We've got a lot of opportunities within the public school system, like the charter schools. Uh, and then we just did the biggest uh, increase in teacher compensation in the history of the state of Florida in this budget that I'm about to sign. And so we're putting an emphasis on American civics and making sure people understand why this country was founded and the principles and, and all the key things about that. And that's going to be real history. And we're not going to have indoctrination in our schools. We're going to have education in our schools. Uh, and we're also going to continue to do more with uh, workforce training and skilled skills-based education, vocational education, because there's a huge demand for these skills. If you're a machinist or you can do tr drive trucks or you can do all these things, you make really, really good money at a very young age. And we have a lot of students that have gone to co colleges and spent a lot of money and they end up in these degrees that are like, you know, zombie studies degree. And then they end up working in a job they could have had at a high school. 
And so we're proud of our higher education system. We don't let them raise tuition, so it's actually affordable. But some of these private colleges are very expensive, and I think some of the students have been sold the bill of goods that just go into debt infinitum, and if you get a piece of paper, somehow magic's going to happen. That's not true. Uh, you need to look to see how can you prepare yourself to be able to do well in society. And so we've uh, added 50 new apprenticeships. Uh, throughout the state of Florida. Uh, we have more uh, folks going to things like truck driving. Uh, we've expanded a diesel mechanic program. All these different things uh, that are not only giving the young people more opportunity, but quite frankly, make Florida a more attractive place for people to bring manufacturing. And we've had people move and since COVID, and we have even more, some major, major manufacturing uh, that, that we're in the process of bringing to Florida. So that's really, really exciting, uh, but it's an example of how uh, being serious about education, but particularly workforce education, uh, that can then make your state even more attractive uh, to expand your industrial base. And so we're going to have some great announcements over the next four or five months uh, along those lines, and I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, you know, we're, um, we're fortunate to be in a free state. Uh, I can tell you that um, uh, folks that are in, and I get a lot of correspondence into our office, the people will write in from other states thanking us for what we're doing and leading on all these different issues, including parents' rights and making sure that parents um, and, and, uh, have, the, have the primary seat at the table. So we're going to keep doing it. We've got a lot more stuff on our agenda over the next uh, weeks and months, and uh, we're going to do all we can to, to keep this state free. So we thank you all for having us, and God bless everybody.